So I want to make sure that I specify that I have picked these things off of Jamie's garden with her permission. With her permission. She's not here with me today. Baby, don't be scratching. The infra oh, my goodness. Please. No one wants to see a little dog scratching their fleas. Guys, I promise they've had their treatments. But uh, I'm going to cut these things up today. And we're not going to eat them. So I'm going to cut them up and feed those to the ostriches. You're not going to eat those. We're going to feed those to the ostriches and the goats. Possibly the horses. We're going to just find out who will eat things from the garden. All right, I'm gonna tell you right now, I don't know if these ostriches are gonna eat too much of this. I'm hoping the goats don't run up and start bothering us while we're trying to do our little experiment. But I have some uh, cantaloupe, some red tomatoes, and some cucumbers, all of which I picked from Jamie's garden with her permission, but uh, we weren't going to eat. Um, and I'm going to find out real fast which of these babies, while well, they look excited, you can see the looks on their faces. They look really curious about what's going on here. And so come on up, you guys. Come on over and see what y'all think. Poor Beverly, she's screaming, she wants something. Okay, so that was just a bite and a spit out right there. Carl, what do you think? It's because Carl's gonna try tomato. That wasn't really something that he Everyone wants to try the tomato. So it's funny how the different colors attract them. No one has touched the green stuff yet. They've all, <laughs> oh no, sorry. They've all nibbled. Uh-oh, well, she's just gonna take care of her, protect her babies from, so no, so Carl's the only one that has swallowed anything. No one, baby, you're gonna mess everything up. So Carl is the only one who has swallowed a tomato. No one else has actually swallowed. They've all put things in their mouth, but they're spitting them right back out. So they're all intrigued right now by the puppy. Uh, Fiona, we're trying to do an experiment here. All right, so this is, this y'all are just making a big mess. If y'all notice, they're making a big mess all over the ground. You're not babies. Stop eating like little babies. I'm gonna actually take this inside and set it down and see if maybe they, the babies will have some. Y'all give me a second. I, don't, I need two hands for this. Look at the ground here. This is such a mess. Y'all have made such a mess. Back up. You're not messing with that puppy. Fiona, you're going to get me hurt, baby. All right, I'm going to set this over here in the shade. And we're going to see if maybe the babies will come by and grab some. Come on, babies. There we go. I'll just leave that sitting right there. Oh, my gosh. Leave Fiona alone. Leave Fiona alone. Hey, leave Fiona alone. Leave her alone. She's not going to be a, she's not a threat to you. All right, so... Here comes Tat. Tat has such amazing personality. He's gonna give it a shot. Nope, he's changed his mind. He's like, nope, not if my dad says no. And Carl's like, I don't know, Tat. It's not my thing. But I can't talk because it's not my thing either, guys. I'm not really a cantaloupe eater. I'll eat watermelon, but not cantaloupe. I know that's weird to a lot of you. Uh, I don't care for tomatoes unless they're green fried tomatoes. I like green fried tomatoes, but just not tomatoes out of the garden. And then the cucumbers, I'll only eat them if I have vinegar. Yeah, so I'm kind of picky like that. Bye, guys. All right, now, be it that we're working on Jamie's garden area today, with her permission... I'm gonna come out and do a little bit of cleanup. This agave plant, it's uh, the cats dug into it and it's all warped and fault. <laughs> it actually fell over, the weight is too heavy on one side. So I'm gonna kind of fix that up a little bit for her. I'm also gonna move it back inside her garden area onto the little uh, concrete area so I can mow and weed eat a little bit easier. This right here has gotten to the point where it's just falling apart on us. The heat guys has taken a severe toll and a lot of things have already died, you know, begin to die back. But, um, hey, I'm just happy to know that I have permission to tinker around with stuff. Jamie, for the longest time, was just all about leave my garden alone. But now she understands that, you know, she's not able to be over here as, as much as I am. And it just requires a lot of work, a lot of watering. And look, we are just in the direct sun. And it's just very, very hot. So I would be real curious to know from you guys, are your gardens still 
doing well or has the heat also got to yours? And is it normal for your garden to already start dying back this early in the summer? All right, I'm about to do something that's gonna be pretty risky. I'm gonna move her watermelon and uh, I'm gonna weed it under it. I'm gonna put it right back where it was at. So y'all wish me luck on this one over here. I'll show you all the before and after, okay? Come on, girls. Guys, today I have to do a little project. One that I hate to do, but I'm gonna have to. Uh, when I bought these 20 rolls of hay from Terry, he has the Longhorn Ranch right up the road. I stuck them here in the garage. But what I'm realizing is that these things are creating a lot of heat in here. And if you don't understand how that can happen, I'm not really the one to explain it to you. But uh, what I've been told is that the concrete floor and then of course the heat in the hay, it can create some heat, which can create some moisture buildup, which can create a lot of uh, mold and stuff growing on your hay. So I've been told that you really can't have your hay stored in somewhere that's not very well ventilated. So my options here are either to open and leave the doors open or cracked open at least. Where's that girl going? On the garage doors or move the hay somewhere else. Now there at Diamond Survivor, we have a great big barn that holds all of our hay. Over here, we don't have that. So what I'm gonna have to do, I believe, is go ahead and take the bucket off the tractor, move this hay and store it outdoors. As crazy as that sounds, as crazy as that sounds, I hope that some of you guys in the comments can explain it better than I can, but uh, we don't wanna risk getting our cows sick. And uh, let me show you where we're gonna store the hay. So around the back side of the garage, this is where the hay's at now. I have this spot along over here that runs up on top of this ridge that has a real nice downward slope. I think I'll drive my tractor with a roll of hay right through here. I'll get my pole saw and cut those limbs down right there so they don't interfere with anything. And then I'll drive right along this barbed wire fence. There's no cows over here, anything that's gonna mess with the hay. I'll just drive right along up through here someplace and I'll just start stacking it. Jump, jump. Jump, jump, jump. I just read a little bit about it, and supposedly the concrete, which is naturally very insulated and cool to the touch, when it forms or when it meets right there with hay, which is naturally warm to the touch, that creates some condensation. That I want to show you a mistake that a lot of people make whenever they're stacking their hay outdoors. Uh, you never want to have any kind of a space between your hay. You always want to make sure your hay is butted up as tight as you can to the one beside it. Same thing over here. Even a little bit of airspace will allow water to get down in there. But you have to try to always butt the hay up as close as you can to each other, which will avoid any moisture falling down between there and in time beginning to rot your hay. So since I've already set these down and I do notice that there's some space between them, what I'm gonna do is take this fourth roll and I'm gonna put my tractor in a low gear, drive it right beside it, and then push on this one over here, which will in turn push them all up real tight to each other. You have to be careful in this situation because I don't want this first one to move and go over the hill. But that's why I left plenty of space here. I also have a small little sweet gum tree that's kind of sitting there holding it so I can kind of push up against it. If I see the tree beginning to move, then I'll know for a fact that the hay is all butted up to each other. This hay here cannot move until this one pushes against it. This can't move until this here butts up against it. Yeah, 
See? I'm watching the speed gum tree. There. See the tree move? Now I know all my hay is put up against each other. Let me show you. You got a nice tight fit there. You got a nice tight fit there. You got a nice tight fit here. And so it may not be pretty, friends. It ain't always gonna be pretty, but you gotta try to get as much of that gap out of there as you can. Uh -oh. I may be in a little bit of trouble here. I might be in a little bit of trouble here. I forgot to put it back where I found it. I forgot to put it. Am I in trouble? I was very careful. I was very careful. Uh, there is a watermelon that I set up on top of there, though. You may want to move back down. Yeah, I'm not sure what to do with that. Let's pick it and eat it. It's too soon. Oh. Okay. Let your troubles fester. Come watch Longhorn Lester. <laughs> yeah, something like that.